This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time now is 427 on your Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrick. And I'm Nicole Griffin. We are tracking breaking news from overnight. One person is dead after a short police chase. This is all happening on the east side. Yeah, this all started around midnight when police saw an erratic driver near 21st in Sherman. That officer then continued to follow that driver. Then a chase occurred. That is where it ended at 21st in Dearborn when the suspect crashed into a pole. The suspect's car then caught fire, causing live ammunition to go off. That suspect died at the scene. No word on their identity right now. And it was a busy night for Metro Police, just blocks away near 25th in Sherman on Gale Street. There was also a shooting around the same time. Yeah, two people were shot inside of a home, a man and a woman. The good news is they are expected to be okay. They are recovering at Eskenazi this morning. No word on a suspect at this time either. All right, Alyssa, it was a hot one out there yesterday. It was very hot and humid and sort of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a similar setup today. We're just going to continue this warming trend. And as we head towards the weekend, we're going to be close to 89 degrees today. Wow. So we're skating on that 90 degree yeah, range. So close. Getting close. We might hit it. We're probably going to hit it over the <laughs> okay. next couple days. Now, this morning we do have just an area of some thunderstorms moving through. That is extremely far north. Now, we could see that slide near Kokomo, but for the most part, we are going to see dry conditions this morning. That convection is going to start to wind down in the next few hours here. We could see a spot or stray storm to the south of us as well. There's an area just in Illinois to the southeast that could slide through, but not expecting a ton from that this morning. For the most part, we're going to start out a little bit cloudier today than what we saw yesterday and then a mix of sun and clouds as we head through the day again a stray afternoon can't be afternoon shower or storm can't be ruled out just due to that convection and just that moisture we're seeing in the atmosphere right now okay and a lot of people probably going to take advantage of this warm weather and get outdoors I hope so and good idea to wear the sunscreen yes. and make sure you're drinking plenty of water and our Erin Lish is going to have some advice on what to do if you and your family are going out camping maybe this weekend or anytime this summer. You have a lot to think about. You know, you might be having a campfire there. You have to think about bugs. You have to think about the tent. There is just a lot that goes into camping. So she is going to sit down with some Boy Scouts members and talk to them about things that they do to stay safe while camping. And maybe you might pick up some tips too. We've got that story plus news, weather and traffic here to kick off your Thursday morning on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. An overnight police chase on the city's east side turns deadly, breaking now at 430 while officers on the scene were forced to take cover. Plus, it's been more than a month since this four-year-old boy was swept away in the Carroll County Creek. This morning, how you can help officers continue their search. And bulldozers tearing down tents and hauling away belongings at a homeless camp along the White River. Why city leaders say it's an effort that will ultimately keep those people safe. Thanks for starting your morning with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Nicole Griffin. And I'm Meredith Barrick, Elena Martello, watching the roadways for us this morning. And Alyssa Donovan here with a check at the forecast. Another hot day ahead. It's going to be hot today. It's going to be humid today. Very similar to what we saw yesterday. We're going to sort of continue the same pattern over the next couple days here where we're starting warm and humid this morning with peaks of sunshine throughout the day. And then, yes, those chances of some afternoon storms again. We have a lesser chance today, but it's still there. 72 degrees right now in Indianapolis, 70 in Richmond. So a very warm start to your Thursday and those temperatures are going to climb just a smidge more than what we saw yesterday into the upper 80s. Some areas likely will hit the 90s today. So I want to show you we do have just this area of convection just to the extreme northern portion of Indiana this morning. That hasn't moved too much, but we are seeing some strong storms there this morning with some lightning as well. For the next couple hours, we're going to keep an eye on it, but looks like we could see that slide into Kokomo, but not much further than that. For the most part, we are going to stay dry for the first half of the day. We have high pressure in control right now. That is that same upper level wave that we saw move through yesterday. Now we could see some of that just skirt into some of those southern counties this morning, but just a slight chance of that and likely just showers, maybe a stray storm, if even that. For the most part, a lot of us are going to stay dry to start out with partly cloudy skies 
skies and then we're going to see just a little bit more cloud coverage as we head through the day and then a chance of that convection packing back up as we head into the afternoon just as we're hitting those daytime highs once again. So just be aware you might see a spot or stray storm later in the afternoon hours, especially for some of those northern counties. But for the most part, again, many of us are going to see dry conditions today. Starting in the low 70s at many spots this morning and then we'll climb into the mid and upper 80s this afternoon. All right, thank you, Alyssa. A little bit of an issue up here on our northwest side. So right now we have this ramp block, the northbound 465 ramp to westbound I-865, and that's because of an overturned semi. Now keep in mind, this is that detour route that you would take if you're heading northbound I-65. So while this closure is underway, you're going to have to take an alternate route. So I think right now your best bet would be on northbound 465. You're going to want to take this exit at 86th Street. Head westbound over here to State Road 267. Head northbound up to I-65. So keep that in mind if it is part of your drive. Hopefully this closure opens up pretty soon. So let's take a look up in that area right now. 465 at I-865. You can see crews on the scene. Let's take a turn down to the south side. I-65 at I-465. The roads are dry for your morning drive. Just pay attention if you're a Boone County driver. Elena, thank you. We start with breaking news from the city's east side. That's where a brief overnight police chase turned deadly. The chase started at 21st and Sherman just after midnight. That's where an IMPD officer spotted an erratic driver. The officer chased the driver to 21st and Dearborn where the suspect crashed into a pole. The impact of the crash caused the power pole and the suspect's car to catch fire. Live ammunition going off inside the car forced the officer to take cover. That suspect died at the scene. The officer was not hurt. More breaking news, this time from the city's northeast side. Two people are in the hospital after being shot near 25th and Gale. This scene unfolded just west of Sherman Drive around, around 1230 this morning. Police are release, releasing very little information right now about what happened. We do know a man and a woman were shot inside a home in the area. Both were taken to Eskenazi Hospital in stable condition. The investigation will continue today. Bulldozers tearing down tents and hauling away belongings at a homeless camp along the White River here. Indianapolis leaders say it's part of a necessary cleanup operation. Officials say the shelters, along with trash buildup and illegal dumping, are a threat to the levee, an essential flood protection structure for the city. People who live there say they understand why it was necessary, but say it could have been handled in a different way. Just like at your house, you're gonna clean your yard, you're gonna take care of your trash, you ain't gonna leave it just sit. Yeah. But they could have went about it another way. We could have helped clean it up. The city spokeswoman says people living there were given two weeks notice. She says they were also given storage and shelter options. The city has undertaken an initiative to raise $4 million to sustain permanent housing for people experiencing homelessness. The path that we have embarked on as a city with a housing first strategy and permanent supportive housing is a long term strategy that I think will pay dividends as it relates to those who find themselves chronically homeless. Last month, the city started a program that pays people experiencing homelessness about $10 an hour to pick up trash in the downtown area. Participants told RTV6 it's given them a positive outlook for the future. The battle over electronic cigarettes in Carmel remains on hold. On Wednesday, a city council committee postponed a vote that would ban the use of e-cigarettes in many public places. The committee also delayed the vote earlier this month. Supporters of the ban say they're concerned about young people and the future. I'm really concerned more about the youth than I am just the general public at this point because I see so much of this vaping is going on in the grade schools. We get calls from teachers asking what to do and um, I'm really concerned if they don't make a hard stance on the vaping issue, we're going to see some real major issues five to ten years down the way. A U.S. Senate bill raising the e-cigarette age to 21 nationwide passed out of committee on Wednesday. The bill is sponsored by Indiana Senator Todd Young. It would also raise the age for purchasing tobacco products to 21. An Indianapolis woman is mourning the loss of her son for a second time. Cheryl Brown lost an urn containing her son's ashes, and now she's asking for help finding it. 31-year-old Christopher Morton died in September of last year. Brown says she left home Tuesday with a small 
small blue and silver urn inside a Kroger bag in her purse. After running several errands, she noticed the bag was missing. She visited Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and Walmart in Avon, and Walmart and Goodwill in Plainfield. She hopes someone finds the bag and sees this story. Crews continue to search a Carroll County Creek for a four-year-old boy swept away by high water. Owen Jones was swept away in Deer Creek in Delphi back on May 23rd. Officials say the boy was playing at a park near the, near the creek. Jones' mother says not finding her son's body has been difficult to handle. State conservation officers say the creek's levels have been constantly changing with the recent rainfall. They say if you spot something unusual along the creek or the Wabash River, contact police. The campground cabins in A. Martin Lodge at Brown County State Park could reopen later today. High levels of sediment entering the lake Lake Ogle have been dampering the ability to make drinking water at the park. But officials say if water sampling continues to be successful, everything may reopen tonight for guests. The park reopened on Monday for limited use like sightseeing and fishing, but Abe Martin Lodge and the campgrounds have been closed since June 17th. The Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles says it will move the Indianapolis West Branch from South Mickley Avenue to Crawfordsville Road. The new location will open up on Tuesday, July 2nd. The BMV says it will be an expanded branch that has Marion County's first BMV Connect Center. BMV Connect is a self-service kiosk which gives you the option to complete more than a dozen BMV transactions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Dozens of companies are looking to hire Hoosiers with military connections. Lucas Oil Stadium will host a veterans job fair from 11 to 3 today. The event is for vets as well as military spouses, transitioning military personnel, National Guard members, and reservists. It is free, but parking in the South Lot will cost $5. You're asked to mention you're attending the Recruit Military Job Fair. For more information, head to HiringHoosiers.com. Some of, the, some of the Democratic candidates taking part in the first debate of the season. Coming up, we'll take a look back at the first debate and preview round two scheduled for tonight. Plus, a Minnesota church congregation says they're being disaffiliated from their house of worship. After the break, the reason behind the potentially historic change. Alyssa. And another warm day in the forecast. It's muggy as well. That heat continues to build into the weekend. I'll break down the details and what you need to know coming up. Stars and Stripes event at Ashley Home Store. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Time now, 442. Here's a look at I-465 at I-865. Some overnight road work underway. Also in the area, we have a ramp closure because of an overturned semi. We cannot see that closure and semi on our screen, but I'll show you how to get around the closure coming up in the next few minutes. Elena, thank you. Here's a look at some of the news expected to make headlines today. Today is officially the Supreme Court's last day of the term. There are five cases still pending, including the Trump administration's attempt to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census and the constitutionality of partisan gerrymandering. Today is the day Iran said it would surpass the 300 kilogram limit on low enriched uranium set by the 2015 nuclear accord. President Trump pulled out of the deal in 2018. The Iranian ambassador to the UN says unless Britain, France and Germany take practical steps to preserve the agreement, they'll have to accept the consequences. On the democracy 2020 front, Wednesday was a big night for politics, the first democratic debate held in Miami last night. The second debate is scheduled for later today. ABC's Lana Zach is in Miami with a preview of what we can expect for night two. Ten more tomorrow. Healthcare emerged as a dividing line in the first democratic debate on NBC. Who here would abolish their private health insurance in favor of a government run plan? Senator Elizabeth Warren aligning with Bernie Sanders in Medicare for all. There are a lot of politicians who say, oh, it's just not possible. What they're really telling you is they just won't fight for it. Former Congressman John Delaney taking a swing against Democrats who would eliminate private insurance. We should be the party that keeps what's working and fixes what's broken. Governor Jay Inslee tried to distinguish his record. And I am the only candidate here who has passed a law 
protecting a woman's right of reproductive health and health insurance. Only to have it zinged by Senator Amy Klobuchar. There's three women up here that have fought pretty hard for a woman's right to choose. The Texas contingent sparring over immigration. If you're the fleeing ones that desperation, asylum, then I'm I want to make about, sure I'm I talking about everybody else. treated with respect. I'm still talking about everybody but, else. But you're looking at just one small part of this. And Senator Tulsi Gabbard and Congressman Tim Ryan fighting over Afghanistan. You have to stay engaged in these situations. Is Engagement that what you is the will tell the parents of those two soldiers who were just killed in Afghanistan? Well, we just have to be engaged. As a soldier, I will tell you, that answer is unacceptable. Greatest All candidates asked, what is the greatest geopolitical threat? Well, a wide variety of answers. China, Russia, climate change. But this one got the most applause. Is Donald Trump. And there's no Trump. <laughs> One name that wasn't mentioned, Democratic frontrunner Joe Biden. He and nine other Democrats will make their case to voters tonight. Lana Zak, ABC News, Miami. At least 1,000 people will soon be out of a job following a fire at a Philadelphia refinery. The fire began with an explosion at Philadelphia Energy Solutions on Friday morning. The fire wasn't put out until Saturday afternoon. Yesterday, the mayor of Philadelphia announced the refinery is expected to shut down within the next month. Officials plan to meet with workers to talk about the economic and employment impact of the closure. The refinery is the 10th largest refinery in the country. This morning, the First Covenant Church in Minneapolis is waiting to find out if it will be kicked out of the Evangelical Covenant Church. The reason, the congregation and its leaders support the LGBT community. But the Covenant Church says that's against its doctrine. Church officials are now meeting to decide whether the congregation stays or goes. However, the church's pastor says his congregation is playing by the church's rules. The framework for which this denomination organizes has an identity where all of the churches are are independent, meaning that our bylaws, our organizing bylaws say clearly this independent church that chooses to affiliate with this denomination and then so on and so forth. And that's been the history of all covenant churches. The vote is expected sometime later this week. If the congregation is ousted, that would be a first for the Evangelical Covenant Church in more than 130 years. The U.S. government announcing a nationwide crackdown on illegal robocalls. The Federal Trade Commission says it is targeting companies that have collectively placed more than 1 billion unwanted calls. The crackdown involves nearly 100 cases, five of which are criminal enforcement actions. This comes as Congress is preparing legislation to expand government power over illegal robocalls. The calls have become a major concern for policymakers as Americans are increasingly subjected to unwelcome cell phone interruptions and fraud. It is 447. Let's get over to Alyssa. It is hot stepping out the door this morning. It is hot and kind of uncomfortable. We're going to continue seeing warm and muggy conditions today. As we head into the afternoon, we also have the potential again of an isolated storm possible. Now it's a lesser potential, but it's still there because we're still in the same setup. As we head into the weekend, that heat is going to continue building and it is building today. We are going to be into the upper 80s, so it is going to be a very warm and muggy day. Temperatures right now 72 degrees, that humidity at 78%. Those winds out of the west right around 8 miles per hour. And we do have just a little bit of an area of convection to the northwest of us right now. That is in northwest Indiana. We're going to continue to keep an eye on that, but it hasn't been moving very much. It if anything, likely it could just skirt down into Kokomo. Not likely we're going to see any of that into central Indiana this morning. And just to the southeast of us or southwest of us, we also have another area of convection right around Illinois right now. We could see some of that skirt into our area this morning right around Bloomington, but just a small chance of that. As we head through the day, those are going to be our morning rain chances. And then we are going to see mostly dry conditions for most locations throughout the day with clouds kind of clearing out as we head into the afternoon and then we have that potential of a little bit more convection as we head into the afternoon and then again in the early evening hours that is again as we're hitting those daytime
all-time highs, and we see that convection build up. You can see also for some areas to the south, we could see some of those showers and storms kick up in the evening. Not expecting severe weather with this, but just be aware you might be seeing some storms. So that's just from that disturbance moving through this morning, and then we'll see that convection possible again this afternoon. Besides that, high pressure is in control right now. We still have this warm and humid air mass over us. We're gonna continue to see that high pressure in control over the next couple days. By Saturday, we do have a wave that's going to move in from the north, and what that's gonna do is bring us a better chance of some showers and storms both Saturday and Sunday, but that warm air is still going to be in control, so temperatures will be be in the 90s. So it's going to be a very warm and summer like weekend with just those chances of a stray shower or storm. Today, starting mild temperatures in the 70s, a little bit muggy out there. And then we are climbing into the mid 80s, upper 80s in many locations this afternoon with those chances of some isolated showers and storms. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, 90 degrees. And then we're going to continue to stay in the 90s for the next several days. Those chances of showers and storms kick in Saturday and Sunday. All right. Thank you, Alyssa. Take a look at I-465 at I-865. This is up on that northwest side. So right here, you see some overnight road work that's underway for some of those in-dot projects right now. And traffic is making its way through. But I want to point out something you're not going to get through up in this area. Let's take a look at the map up on our northwest side right now. The uh, 465, this, excuse me, this uh, up here on this side, then blocked crash northbound 465 ramp to westbound I-865. That's closed right now, and that's because of an overturned semi. We couldn't see it on our live in-dot traffic camera, but I did just confirm that it is still underway with ISP. The good news is no injuries, but the bad news, this is also that detour route for this closure of northbound uh, I-65. To get around it, exit at 86th Street, head westbound over here to State Road 267. Take State Road 267 northbound to get to northbound I-65. So keep that in mind. Hopefully it wraps up pretty soon. So I'll let you know when it does open back up. Let's take a look down on the south side, I-65 at I-465. And you can see traffic is moving along just fine. The Roads are dry for your morning drive, but if you're a northwest side driver, prepare for a little bit of a difficult morning drive. Elena, thank you. The Indiana State Fair is right around the corner. Straight ahead, we're taking a look at some of the delicious new food items you'll be able to find. Plus, an urgent warning from an Indiana mother ahead at 5 o'clock. The health scare for her daughter who was waiting in the ocean and the advice from local doctors. But first... I'm Vinny Politan. Today on Court TV, the dramatic conclusion of Florida versus Scott Nelson. It's a capital case. Scott Nelson accused in the abduction and death of a nanny in central Florida. The prosecution has rested. The defendant now must decide whether or not he's going to testify. Then we expect closing arguments, and then we will be on verdict watch. That's all coming up today on the all-new Court TV. Don't forget, you can watch the all-new Court TV live on your mobile device by visiting CourtTV.com. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Now with the People First Warranty. We are getting a sneak peek at one of the most important attractions at the State Fair. The food. New items include Hoosier hometown hash, two grilled hash brown patties with Munster pepper jack, cheddar, and Swiss cheese, angry pretzel poppers rolled in diced jalapenos and served with jalapeno ranch dressing, and bison hush puppies. If you'd like to see a full list of all the new State Fair foods, we have a photo gallery on our website, theindiechannel.com. A hotel's famous warm chocolate chip cookies are soaring to new heights. In a partnership with company Zero G and NanoRacks, Doubletree by Hilton will launch a batch of cookie dough inside a prototype space oven. The venture is part of a payload bound for the International Space Station. It's expected to happen sometime in the fall and will be the first ever food baked in orbit. And now we are all hungry. Yeah, seriously, yeah. after all those good, <laughs> you had the State Fair main food. meal stuff. State food fair, state fair food, <laughs> and then the cookies for oh, dessert. Which those state fair foods, I mean, oh, you have just, to go with an empty stomach. You have the to go with an empty one. stomach, and mm -hmm. they're just getting creative with. They stuff. are creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Impressive. 
All right, let's get a look at the weather because that is impressive as well. It's going to be a nice day. We are most of us going to see mostly sunny skies throughout the day, a little bit of cloud coverage here and there. And then we do have that chance again of an isolated shower or stray storm this afternoon. 89 degrees for the high. And you can see in our seven day that heat just continues to build. Mostly sunny with 90s tomorrow. 90s continue into the weekend. We do have a chance again Saturday and Sunday for an isolated shower or storm or two and then we are going to stay hot and sunny to start out the work week with more chances of storms as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday.